Jesus Christ, what the fuck was today? <laughs> Alright, so I've got... I would typically talk about stuff like this on Twitter and Facebook, but there's too much to talk about, so I have to put this on YouTube. Um... Two major things happened. First off, I got into a wreck. Uh, I was leaving school, we were at an intersection, we were at a stop sign, max we were going was like 3-4 miles an hour, and that's very liberal. Um, caused some scratches on my car, caused some scratches on her car. She was very calm about it, um, we, she was friendly about it, she was just like, really? And I told her, really sorry, it was entirely my fault. I was looking to check for traffic and didn't realize the car in front of me had stopped. Uh, so that was... An oopsie on my part, but everything went well, we exchanged numbers, we moved on. I already talked about that on Twitter and Facebook. Here's why I'm making this video. <laughs> I almost got my ass killed. And that's not an exaggeration, like legitimately I'm probably lucky to be alive right now. What had happened, and that's not, I've made a joke about that before, uh uh, this is, this is the real deal. I performed at the Juggling Gypsy like I announced, I played there, show went well, I kind of flubbed up Reign of Dark and I also added like a little new thing to it where I put some screams into the bridge. Uh, hopefully I will perform that during one of these upcoming YouTube shows. By the way, nothing's cancelled because of this because I'm fine and I just need some time to breathe. <laughs> I just got home. Um, so what had happened? As I'm leaving the venue to go home... A guy walks up to me, um, and basically says, hey, I need a ride to get to another place in town. I'm like, sorry, because the Juggling Gypsy is not in a great place in town, but the place, the Juggling Gypsy itself is really safe. But I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I was already nervous about the situation, but he kept insisting, and this kept going on for like 10 minutes. So I was like, okay, what we'll do is we'll walk you down to an ATM... I'll get some money so you can get a taxi and go home. We walk to the ATM, and things get really, really hairy here. I put in my card, ATM's out of order, my phone's low on battery, fuck you phone, that's irrelevant. ATM is out of order. But he refuses to believe it's out of order, and because he's texting somebody on my phone... Because he's trying to get a ride home. I thought he was trying to get a ride home. I'll reveal what was really going on in a bit. He's like, I'm not, you're not getting your phone back until you give me that money. And was holding my phone hostage and slowly kept walking away with it. And this kept going on for like five minutes or something ridiculous. And I was like, okay. At this point, I have two options. I can either forcibly get my phone back, which was the less likely option. Or B, if he actually runs off with it, there's a lot of places open. I can just walk in, call the police. Um, but, thankfully, I managed to prove to him the thing is indeed out of order. So he gives me my phone back. Um, next thing I know, my card gets stuck in the thing. And we can't get it out. And initially, again, he believes I'm fucking with him, but I proved to him it's not because you hear the little sound. When you press the ATM and it's like, you're done, here's your card, it makes like a little sound. It kept making that sound on repeat. So something was definitely jammed in there. And he admitted to that and was, again, I was right. <laughs> but, um, this kept going on for a while. I was like, okay, we can call the police and see if they can take you home. He doesn't respond to that. Eventually, a couple people come up, and one of them has uh, drugs. And this guy immediately goes for them. And that's when I realized, this guy's not trying to get home, this guy was just trying to get drugs. Thankfully, I was able to get out, because eventually he was like, just forget about it, I'll just walk home. And I was like, okay, well, good luck with that. Got home, or got back to the Juggling Gypsy, um... And reported, uh, had them call the police so we could report it. The police were already searching out for me because my family had called them because I told them what was going on as it was happening. Um, and I gave them a report. They're currently looking out for him. Um, 
while we were waiting for the police, I just want to say I did hang out with the fans. I actually explained the concept or the idea and the concept behind the aftermath to somebody. Um, revealed. I'm going to reveal it here as well. The reason why... Um, the whole concept idea with the aftermath, that all started because I looked at Start of Hell and was like, I could turn this into something. So I make Start of Hell and recording it inspires me to make a whole album out of sort of the concept. Which, by the way, is why Start of Hell became the lead single, because that was how the concept started. But anyway, yeah, got home safe and sound, really shaken up. My family's pissed, understandably, both about my car because it's a little bit damaged, and about what the fuck just happened. Um, it's going to be a little bit before I perform at the Juggling Gypsy again, but I do want to go back and perform, because I love performing there, and like I said, the place itself is really safe. It's just, every once in a great while, you'll get one of those people. So, I'm very lucky. Things could have been much worse, and honestly, probably should have been much worse. At some points, he was asking... If I had a knife so we could try and get the thing out, um, I didn't. And, yeah, it was it was a mess. But, yeah, I wanted to... <sighs> it was a day, dude, and I just needed to talk about this. Um, yeah. See you guys later.